What's going on YouTube? Rockefeller back for another video. Today we're going to discuss best mini LED TV settings and also we are going to discuss best OLED TV settings for 2024. This is going to be a best settings for movies. We're also going to discuss why I think dynamic and vivid mode is better than filmmaker or movie mode, but we'll discuss that later on in the video. Let's get to it. On this remote, we're going to go to menu and I am going to go into our picture settings modes. So right now I use dynamic for most of our movies. Uh, we're going to go down into the expert settings mode and I'm going to just go by each one of these. I'm going to go through the picture settings. Now we are now in expert settings for brightness. I use to keep my uh, brightness between 40 to 44. Right now it's at 43 um, for contrast. I use to keep it a little bit higher. Um, this just improves the contrast level uh, between light and dark colors. Sharpness, I keep between 10 and 15. For color, I usually keep it at around 35. Um, in other modes, it's usually closer to 30 or 25, but I like a little bit more punch and saturation in my colors. We're going to go down to picture clarity settings. This is going to help with your motion. So for your picture clarity settings, we're going to go into custom. And then we're going to go down to blur reduction and I usually keep my blur reduction between three and five. If I'm just watching standard television, I'll probably, you know, tone it down to three and both of these shutter reduction, um, same thing. I keep them both the same. So if I'm watching standard TV, I'm probably going to, you know, reduce the motion down to like three, um, on each one of these, but for movies, it's going to be either four or five on both of them. So you have to, if you're going to do blur reduction on four, I would definitely do judder reduction on four as well. So I'll just keep them the same. The noise reduction, um, reduce picture noise to avoid distractions such as flickering. I just have that on auto. Uh, I'm not going to keep that turned off. For local dimming, I always have it set to high. I just find that um, it helps control the brightness uh, a little bit better. And so I, I don't ever use it on anything else besides high. For contrast enhancer, I keep it on high as well. For color tone, I keep it on cool. Um, warmer pictures, I like mine cooler. Um, I find like the whites whiter. I don't really like an orange tint to my whites in my picture or orangish reddish tint. For the gamma, you can play with this. I usually keep the gamma around uh, zero or negative one for shadow detail. I usually do negative two or negative three. And then for our color space setting, I'm going to do native. It just gives you more color punch. So we'll toggle between auto and then we'll go back to native. And as you can see, there's a deeper blue for me. I just like to have a little bit more depth in the image and some more color saturation. All right. So now we're going to go into filmmaker mode. As you can see, the image got darker in filmmaker mode. So as we go into filmmaker mode in the expert settings, we will go ahead and customize and see what we can get out of this mode. We'll, we'll take the brightness down 45, leave the contrast up. We'll take the color up to 35. Picture clarity settings, we're going to go into custom for picture clarity settings. I mean, I need good motion. So we'll, we'll put it at four uh, setting. We're going to turn noise reduction back on. Local dimming, we'll leave it high. Contrast enhancer, we're going to kick it in. And as you can see, the image got brighter. And so that's what we want. We want a little bit more depth in the image. The color tone is warm. I'm sorry, it's warm too. Since this is filmmaker mode, we'll leave it in standard. For the gamma, we'll leave it at zero. Shadow detail, we'll just take it down one since the image is already dark. Color space settings, we're going to give it the native. So it'll give us a little bit more punch and depth to the image. And that is what I have for my expert settings for filmmaker mode. Brightness at 45, contrast at 50, sharpness at 12, color at 35, custom picture settings, probably somewhere between three and five. Uh, just make sure both of these match, the numbers match, whichever you use between three and five. The local dimming at high, contrast enhancer at high, color tone standard, gamma, we're gonna leave that at zero shadow detail at one, and then your color space you'll leave at native. All right, guys, so as you can see, this is Filmmaker. This is what Filmmaker mode looks like. And now we're gonna go back into dynamic. You see more of the image. These are my settings for Filmmaker mode on a mini LED TV. Now we're gonna go through our OLED TV picture settings. All right, guys, so now we're taking a look at the OG LG CX and we're going to go into vivid mode. 
All right. So this is what I have for my settings for vivid mode. We're going to go into all settings and then we're going to go into the picture mode settings. All right. So I have my OLED light at 85. My contrast is set to 90. Adjust the difference between the bright and dark areas of the screen. The brightness right now is at 50. I have my sharpness at 10. I, I have heard and read um, a lot of OLED owners setting it closer between zero and five. For me, I like the sharpness at 10. I like my color with punch. And so I have my color set at 75. I like my color temperature on the cooler side of things. And then on the picture options, the noise reduction I have set to high. It removes irregular and erratic pixels for a clearer image. MPEG noise reduction. This reduces irregular noise from digital video signals and optimizes image quality clearly. Smooth gradation, I have it set to high. Uh, this removes jaggies in the picture for a smooth picture. Um, and then true motion, you can play with this. I just play with it depending on the movie that I'm watching, but I, for the most part, have it set to smooth. Now we're gonna take a look at the cinema mode on the OLED. All right, so we're gonna go to all settings and picture mode settings. All right, so I have the OLED light at 90 to brighten up the image because it gets kind of dark. Contrast is at 90. The brightness I turned up a little bit more. Sharpness still at 10. Color, 75. So it's basically the same thing as the Adobe Vivid mode. Um, I have the colors juiced up a little bit more. For advanced controls, for this particular mode, it lets me access the advanced controls. And so we have dynamic contrast turned on high. This just optimizes the contrast settings based on image brightness. We have our super resolution. I don't do anything with the white balance or the color management system and the peak brightness has just been set to high to give us some more brightness. Picture options, same thing, noise reductions on high, MPEG, Noise reduction set to high, smooth gradation, same thing. I don't do anything with motion eye care. True motion, I've left it smooth. To me, Vivid is just a superior picture mode. It's giving you more of what you expect from a TV in 2024. Oh no! <laughs> All right, so let's wrap it up. All right, guys, so that about wraps up our video. I just wanted to give you guys settings that will help you when you're watching movies. Everybody is entitled to their own preferences and what they like. For me, vivid mode is just the superior mode. I like the fact that filmmaker is available because we need to have a point of reference when it comes to accuracy. So I respect and value what the creator's intent is for their movies. Um, however, when you spend a lot of money on televisions, you kind of want to have your own preference. If you find value in these settings today, guys, please like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you guys in the comments. Peace.